Hi, this is Ethan with Digital Bits. And today I've got the Asus ZenBook 14 uh, UX433FA to take a look at. The ZenBook 14 is available in two different models, the FA variant, which this is, and the FN variant. The main difference be being between the two being the FN includes a NVIDIA MX150 discrete GPU. Uh, there are multiple flavors of these uh, FA and FN laptops available. Uh, this one is the 16 gigabyte model. Uh, I believe an 8 gigabyte is available as well uh, with a 512 SSD. Uh, list price on this particular build is something around $11 to $1,200 uh, street price. I think at MSRP is around $1,299. This laptop's claim to fame is its size. Uh, it's, it's quite small. There is, Asus is claiming a 92% screen to body ratio, meaning the screen takes up 92% of the, of the lid. Uh, the laptop itself is available in both royal blue and silver. The port selection is pretty unique. Uh, we've got on this edge here, uh, a proprietary barrel uh, power adapter, full size HDMI, uh, USB type A and a USB type C. On the uh, right side, we've got another USB type A, micro SD card slot, and a headphone jack. Uh, the laptop is quite thin and it has a pretty unique hinge. When you open the lid, there's some rubber feet on the back of the screen that turn into the rear feet of the laptop and give it a little bit of a lift off the surface. Uh, I think this is a pretty novel design. In addition to bringing the screen all the way down to the keyboard, it gives it a little bit of an ergonomic lift. I think Asus actually refers to this as the ergo lift hinge. I'm not sure. I think it's a way of making a smaller laptop appear smaller uh, when, it's, uh, when it's open. Uh, keyboard is a very good high quality touch. Uh, to, uh, key surface. Uh, there's about 1.4 millimeters of throw on each key. Uh, there is no strange layout uh, uh, configurations like on some of the other laptops, no page up, page down button right next to the arrow keys to be accidentally selected when you're trying to navigate on an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, there is a row at the top of function buttons, which include the volume uh, controls, backlight controls, home end, page down, page up, print screen, uh, delete, along with the power button all the way on the right hand side. The laptop includes a Windows Hello camera at the top, uh, not below like the XPS 13 or the previous generations of the XPS 13. It is a very responsive uh, Windows Hello camera. The only uh, uh, camera, Windows Hello camera that I've seen that's faster is on the Surface Pro and uh, Surface Laptop 2. Those two are extremely fast. This is, this is second place, but not by a whole lot. Asus includes a laptop sleeve with the laptop and a USB uh, to Ethernet adapter. In addition to that, they include one of the smallest 45 watt power adapters I've ever seen with a laptop. The FA is a 45 watt power adapter. The FN that has a discrete GPU has a 65 watt uh, power adapter. It's a very small device, uh, the power adapter is. It includes uh, international plugs uh, for your location. It is pretty it's pretty small, but one of the challenges with that size is it gets actually very warm when you've been using it and charging the notebook. And that brings up some of the interesting points about this laptop. While this is a 2.6 pound laptop with uh, extremely small uh, size, uh, it does have some quirks. One of the quirks I've discovered is that while it does have a USB-C port, it does not offer any way to get DisplayPort alt mode over USB-C. It does not offer um, any charging capability over that USB-C port. So what I've noticed is that if you, you're, you're used to using your laptop with a USB-C docking station, not Thunderbolt USB-C, keep in mind, um, this laptop will not charge. You will have to use the uh, power adapter in those circumstances. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I used this for about four days of my regular work, and I found that the performance was, was quite adequate. We've discovered that uh, this new Whiskey Lake U CPU is, is pretty much the, the, the best on the market at the 15 watt uh, power size. I didn't notice any CPU throttling uh, under load, but then again, I used it for typical office work as most people probably would for a laptop this size. Uh, Asus is saying that this is a 2.6 pound laptop. I, I believe that. I think it's a little bit over that. Uh, the the uh, uh, size, I think I said it before, but the size is pretty amazing. Um, you'll notice that the laptop is very shallow front to rear. And 
it is about the same width as any other typical 14 inch laptop from, from left to right. And what they do to accommodate that is when you're looking at the screen here, you'll see that there is no chin below the screen as you might see. So right below on the bottom here on most laptops uh, right here, you will see a, a bit of blank area and then the screen above. Asus has made the depth of the keyboard significantly smaller than most other laptops. I found that didn't impact uh, typing at all. Uh, some laptops I do worry about the, the crook of my, uh, of my wrist sitting on a, on a sharp edge. I didn't seem to have that problem with this laptop, which, which was a nice, uh, um, nice thing not to have. Battery life, I was seeing a legitimate 10 plus hours in normal usage. That includes Wi-Fi, web browsing, videos, uh, that sort of thing. Um, overall, uh, the de design of the Royal Blue model is pretty beautiful. You've got some gold accents. It stands out. Uh, the, the lid has sort of a patterned appearance to it, but not texture. Uh, it has a, a pla fully plastic enclosure, maybe, maybe some higher quality plastic, but plastic nonetheless. Um, so I think it's relatively durable. Asus predicts that this is uh, uh, engineered to a mil standard 810G, whatever that means. I believe that means they do some drop testing, vibration testing, uh, temperature testing, etc. Uh, I don't think that this laptop will have any durability concerns for you. Um, that said, it does feel like it's a, a bit of a notch down from the uh, Dell XPS 13. Uh, the carbon fiber on the Dell is is probably the most durable uh, uh, packaging you'll ever see. There are some speakers on the bottom side. I wish they were on the sides or on the top. The uh, gold accent on the keyboard here looks like it's perforated. looks like it should be a, a speaker grill, but it's actually not. The speakers are actually on the bottom. Speakers are sufficient, if not spectacular. Um, they're about on par with, with most of their uh, Ultrabooks of this size. Um, the power button is in an in an odd place on the keyboard. Uh, while the keyboard overall is very good, I found that when I go to hit the backspace button on the keyboard, I often will hit the power button by accident. Luckily, in most cases, that just puts it to sleep and I can just hit another key and wake it up. The, uh, the major missing element here, and this is missing on not a lot of laptops, but, but the Asus line in particular, it really misses Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt 3. USB-C is a nice port to have, but it's not as truly convenient as having a Thunderbolt and USB-C port. Um, the power delivery over USB-C is also a major uh, lacking uh, component of this laptop. The serviceability is also somewhat in question. Uh, the, it requires torque screws to get on the bottom cover, which, which I'm not a fan of. I prefer Phillips. In addition to that, um, uh, there's really nothing serviceable inside. The uh, RAM is soldered onto the motherboard. The uh, SSD is in a slot, but that's really it. Uh, it does have a 50 watt hour battery. And like I said before, a legitimate 10 hours of battery life was achievable. I did see 11 hours on a very slow day, um, which is impressive for a laptop this size. There are touchscreen options in the flip version of the ZenBook 14. This one, the 14 inch in the, in the laptop form factor does not have any touch options, which if you're, um, a die-hard Windows 10 user, you know, that can be a plus or a minus, but the, we, I believe that not having the 4K screen and not having a touch screen actually adds to battery life. So if you're really concerned about battery life, these are, this is the way I would configure a laptop in the first place. Overall, if you're looking for the smallest 14-inch laptop on the market, this is it. Uh, this is an excellent laptop. Um, I think there are... Uh, if you're in the market for a laptop that will last a transatlantic flight watching movies, there aren't many better options than this. Uh, it has an excellent 1080p screen, uh, goes to about 350, 340 nits. Uh, I, I didn't personally test that, but that's the specification. Um, but it's plenty bright. Uh, it is a glossy screen, so reflections will be a problem if you're using it outdoors. Uh, the typing experience is excellent. Uh, it's as good as any other laptop on the market from, from my experience. And I think that if you're looking for an ultra portable with a discrete GPU, uh, the FN variant of the ZenBook 14 is probably the one, the right one to go with. Overall, uh, very happy with this laptop. Uh, I am going to be holding onto it for some time just as a, a, a benchmark for some of the other ones that I'm, that I'm gonna be providing some reviews of. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If this is content that uh, uh, you'd like to see more of, please consider subscribing and clicking the thumbs up button. That really does help us. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.